40 seconds. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're here in God's house, and uh, we know we know we're in challenging times uh, with this COVID, and we try to do the best we can. But it's Thanksgiving, and and we want to be thankful and. Uh, I think there's a lot of attitude change that can happen if we're thankful, right? Because it's easy to focus on a lot of the negative things. <laughs> and there's a lot of things, you know, that are hard and challenging and, you know, we you know, hear things from the government or we, whatever, you know? But we don't want to be focused on that stuff that pulls us down uh, from being the thankful people God wants to be because we can count all the blessings and we have many. And so we want to we want to celebrate and give thanks, and uh, we're going to have a time today of uh, you know what are you thankful for, and if you'll just kind of stay where you are and speak it out, I'll repeat it so that it's able to be heard and recorded, so that other people that come along in the service later in the day or whenever can hear it. But we won't pass microphones or do any of those things like we used to do when we could. But uh, so so kind of prepare your mind. But it really comes from let them give thanks to the Lord. See, I take it as a command to me. <laughs> let them give thanks to the Lord. Let them exalt him in the assembly. So that's what the people did. Uh, you know, across the, the God followers always gave praise to God. And, and I know God hears us when we do it silently. But I know that we at times, when God prompts us, we need to do it audibly and we need to do it in other ways uh, so that his word gets forth. Because often when we pray or we do things in silence, no one knows what we're doing, right? But, but we need to praise God and it even says in loud, loud sounds, loud music, loud everything. But maybe we're not ready for that today. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. No, no, we need it in every day. We need to praise Him in every way. So glad you're here today. Uh, thank you for observing the social distancing and uh, the masks and all the things. We're just keeping each other safe. And we're so thankful we have been able to be safe in this season and, and going ahead. Uh, no to Kia Fellowship tonight. Uh, they're still concerned about some of those things uh, in their group and those things. Even our Jargo uh, Men's Koinia, we done some. We did a Zoom meeting this past Wednesday because uh, some people at their workplaces where people were working got the virus, and so just to be cautious, uh, we did it virtually. So, so uh, let's be safe. <clears throat> Mobile food pantry Tuesday the twenty fourth. Volunteers needed to set up in the afternoon and throughout the cleanup, and then distributions four to six come and get some food and take it. And make sure someone enjoys it. Angel trees out in social hall. Uh, angels are available. There's a sign-up sheet there. Fill that out. Uh, they're due back the 13th. And then the 16th is uh, delivery. So if you can set your schedule and come. And then uh, decorating the tree. Saturday, November 28th, 2 o'clock. If, you, if you're able to come and help and put the greens up and those kind of things, we, we'd love to see you. Uh, so mark that and let the light of Christ come good morning good to see you all would you please stand for the light of Christ reading from 1st Chronicles 16 verses 8 through 12 I'll give thanks to the Lord call on his name Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, Lord God, we are so thankful. You call us to give thanks, and, and we're thankful for a nation and a, and a place where, where it's normal to give thanks to you. God, we do ask your blessing, and we, we're thankful that we can glory in your holy name, that we can seek you and your strength and your presence, that we can remember your wonderful works, that we can count every blessing, God, and give you praise and thanksgiving for it all. So as we come this day to join in the assembly of your people, and it, it's not just here, it's everywhere, God, all the people who assemble to praise you, we join that great throng and we sing and lift up our praises, our thanksgiving, and we just ask that you fill our hearts to overflowing for your honor and your glory, we pray. Amen.
greet one another? The smile, a wave, words of peace and love. Isn't it good to worship the Lord? Say amen. Amen. Now try to get your vocal cords loosened up even more than David's. <laughs> we are blessed. And uh, as we come to our offering time, I, I note the basket here and in the back and out in the social hall. I just want to again commend you all as you've been faithful folks uh, giving uh, in, in many ways and beyond the, the offering baskets. So we, we want to give God praise as we dedicate these gifts as we go to our prayer time. Let us pray. Lord God, we are thankful for so many things. And we're so glad, God, we could sing about your forever God who upholds your people, who blesses your people with abundance. And God, we do return a portion of that blessing, that abundance, and we dedicate these tithes, offerings, and gifts to you, and we just pray your blessing on them, that you would use them for your kingdom's victory. So work in our hearts, God, this day. We're, we're thankful to be gathered. Lord, we know uh, we come in a difficult time in, in our nation's history uh, for many reasons, God. From viruses to elections, and, and we just lift that all to you, God. We do uh, come and we want to glorify you and worship you and honor you, and we come with thankful hearts, God, and we, we want our hearts to be filled to overflowing that uh, our thankfulness just brings you honor in every way, God. Lord, we, we do come with heavy hearts at times and challenges and with prayer concerns for friends and loved ones. We do pray for Eric and uh, Lois. And we pray for uh, this family that lost uh, a father, lost a husband. And we just uh, lift these to you. We lift up a 19 year old Patrick with surgery recovery issues uh, uh, from something with his pancreas. We lift up friends of ours, Lori and John, who are battling COVID. We pray for others, God, that uh, are staying somewhat isolated because of maybe a coworker or someone else has gotten the virus and it's been diagnosed so God, we just pray for these who are keeping themselves safe. And we just pray for others. We pray for Leo, who's been having some health challenges, and we pray your healing touch. And God, so others that are on our hearts, we just want to take a few moments of silence and lift our hearts to you and lift these cares to you. So hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Lord God, we're so thankful that you know each and every care and concern. And God, because of who you are, you know it in deeper and more understanding ways than we could ever understand when we bring a concern or care to you, God. So we pray for healing and for victory and help and strength and whatever's needed in every situation, God. We're thankful for your comfort and your care. We're thankful that you're a loving Lord who knows us, 
who created us, who poured out blessing on us that we would worship you and honor you and give you praise and thanksgiving. So God, we're just thankful to be your people. And we pray for uh, those that aren't able to be with us in these moments, but know that they're with us in spirit. And for those that watch later today and join in, we just uh, lift their concerns and cares to you too, God. And we join in the prayer that you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So let us be those who give thanks to the Lord. We have started that, but I don't think we're through yet, are we? No, never. And uh, we should be that kind of people. Yes, we've been coming through a difficult year with this COVID-19, and even some people might be struggle, struggling to be thankful. This uh, pandemic has wreaked some havoc on our lives. It's affected everyone. Everyone's been touched. But I stand to remind you that we all have a reason to be thankful. And it's not just because we've not gotten it or because we've recovered from it or we've maintained our job or found a new one or uh, we're stable, still able to maintain our lives in some fashion that we like. No, our being thankful goes deeper than just being thankful for overcoming difficult circumstances. It goes deeper because really our thankfulness is reserved for God and God alone. Amen. We know who our blessings come from. So giving thanks is a major part of worship and our worshiping, isn't it? Because we recognize what God is doing in our lives. So we stop, we remember, and we're grateful. And that kind of comes out us in, of us in praise and thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God comes from a place from within us where we remember where, where we could be without him. Not just in the world physically, but where we'll spend eternity because of the choice he made in sending his son to give his very life for us. Last week I talked about how you are the apple of his eye. It's true, you are. God says you are that apple, that precious gift, that precious thing. And his love and care is just one reason for us to be thankful. Now if we're walking in a place where we're grateful, for what God has done for us and we're being grateful in that state of thankfulness. It's our being thankful that causes us even to want to spend more time with God, doesn't it? Amen. It's part of a loving relationship. I know that we understand what it means to give thanks and I, and I know we, we all do that, okay? That's why one of the reasons we're here. But I want to read a story about uh, a, a, a pastor, what happened to him, uh, to get us refocused on this idea of being thankful, because not everybody is. <laughs> so uh, this pastor entered a crowded restaurant, and he sat down across from a man who was already eating. The pastor paused and asked uh, the blessing and gave thanks, and he started to eat as he was accustomed to doing, you know, that's how he started his, how many of you pray before you eat? And that's just something you, you learn to do because you want to, you know who it comes from, right? But, but the fellow across the way was a little perplexed and he, 
This fellow diner asked, uh, hey, did you have a headache or is there something wrong with your food? The pastor explained, no, I was giving thanks to God for the food. The mayor responded, one of those, huh? Well, I work hard for my food and I earn it by the sweat of my brow, so I never have to thank anyone else for it. I don't have to thank anyone for it. I just dig in. The pastor replied, you're a lot like my dog. He does that too. <laughs> Now, I grew up with a few dogs. No, I mean, not tons of dogs, but I'm just saying, we always had a few dogs around. Like, I remember Candy, you know, I was little, you know, about probably four, five, six years old, and I remember he was about this big. It was a collie, so he didn't have to be a huge dog now, <laughs> but when you're little like that. And he was a kind and gentle dog, and I don't remember him eating so much, but I remember some of the others, and. You know, if you were fixing their dish and they and you saw some meat, you know, some leftovers from the food, and they would be slobbering almost if you if they saw that. Or if you're not fixing it fast enough, they would start to whimper and whine and go, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, right? You, how many of you all had dogs, right? So and then there's times when you're you're trying to set it down and they're pushing you out of the way to get to it. And then they woof it down. That's their probably way of saying they're thankful. Because they can't express it any other way, but they inhale that food sometimes, don't they? Not every dog does that, okay? But there are definitely some that are. I just wonder if that guy in the restaurant was like that. <laughs> they didn't really give thanks, pause and give thanks. And, and I, and I know many of us do, and I think we should. We should say thank you. And it's not just, you know, knowing what blessing in the food we have. We just, we're just blessed people. But I do want us to think about the man in the restaurant. There are a lot of people that think that. That they're self-made men, men or women, women, you know. That they don't need God. They didn't, you know, he didn't do anything for them, according to them. But I know I'd rather be very thankful for all of God's blessings, all he provides. I know his favor, and I'm blessed. Every good thing comes from God. I believe it. Psalm 92, 1 and 2, and verse 4 says, It is good, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto his name. O Most High, to show forth his loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. The people that I know, most of them like good things, don't they? And so David tells us it's a good thing to thank God for his loving kindness and faithfulness. And the most fitting way to do that is to praise him. So if you want to turn to page 490 in your pew Bibles, we'll look at verse or Psalm 107. Just the first nine verses we'll read, but I want to refer to the whole of Psalm 107. The first nine verses of Psalm 107, it's the psalmist is bursting into praise a few times as he tells four short stories about thanksgiving. It says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert wastes, Finding no way to be, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsting, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wonderful works to humankind. 
For he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. Let us pray. God, we're just thankful for your word and for the truth of being thankful. And how we're thankful for your deliverances in our lives. But we're thankful for so much more, God, for everything, God. And we truly count our blessings and know them. And so fill our hearts with this thankfulness in this season of gratitude that you would be honored. In your holy name we pray, amen. So I want to look a little bit deeper at this Psalm 107. Like I said, it's four short stories, and I'm not, I'm not going to go real deep into all of them, but, you know, it says, some wandered in the desert. So they were having a problem. Some sat in darkness. Some were sick through their sinful ways. That's verse 17. Some went down to the sea in ships doing business. But then they all ran into trouble. And we and in our season of this world, aren't we in some trouble? <laughs> Different kinds of trouble. And so they all got into some trouble until they said, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and they delivered, delivered them from their distress. And each time, those, each, each of those stories, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And they brought them out of out from their distress. It's a reminder to us we got to cry out to the Lord, isn't it? And there will always be some trouble, won't there? It goes on to say in verses 31 and 32: let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. And then verse 43, let those who are wise give heed to these things and consider the steadfast love of the Lord. You want to be wise, look at the whole picture, right? Amen. Realize how good it is to thank God. And it's, you know it's just right and good, isn't it? Even when you bow your head at mealtime, don't you think it's just the right thing to do? I didn't make this stuff. I didn't, you know... I didn't cook it. I didn't you know, provide it, you know, whatever. God blessed it. God brought it. God gives it. God offers it. And that's just one way that he shows his blessing to us. So when we look around, you know, we, we saw this four times. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, for his wonderful deeds for mankind. He does help us in so many ways, doesn't he? When we look around, we think about the wonderful goodness of our God. It does perk us the desire to praise him, to give thanks. So what do you wish to, to give him thanks for this day? It says, let them give thanks to the Lord. Let them exalt him in the assembly. So what are you thankful for? Here's your chance to say it. I'll repeat them. So if you just want to share it where you are, speak out and I'll repeat it so it gets... I'm thankful that the church doors are open so we can fellowship and worship together. Thankful for the church doors being open so we can gather and worship and fellowship. Amen. Others? Yes. Thankful for a couple things. Uh, the eye surgeon and his team that did the cataract surgery for me. I'm also... Uh, so grateful for uh, parts of the new normal that, that God has moved us in, in different directions for good and especially in my business. Um, you know, but uh, I'm especially thankful for my family and especially Betsy. Uh, through all of these changes and all of the, the ways that he, you know, looking for his direction in, in all of this rather than waiting for someone else to to uh, to give us direction, uh, he's he's there always, and uh, I'm so grateful for that. Thankful for eye surgery and God's guiding hand in that. Thankful for uh, every blessing throughout his family and loved ones. Yeah. 
in God's direction. Others? A uh, couple of things. Number one, very thankful that my wife's surgery went well. Um, and we just need to continue the reminder that recovery takes time. Uh, number two, uh, very happy to be here versus uh, virtual service. I guess I'm sort of um, pleading my own case that when the virtual service occurs, it's too easy to find yourself asleep. Um, so it happens here. <laughs> but, but thankful for his wife's surgery and successful surgery and recovery. And, and then thankful to be here because in person it, it's, it's mo much more meaningful than a virtual. And, and the singing is well appreciated. And singing is, is well appreciated. Others with the praise, with thanksgiving. Um, I'm thankful for a ton of things. This life, the, you know, our health, um, jobs, house, you know, all of those things. But I'm especially thankful right now because our youngest daughter, through all of this, is graduating college in a couple weeks and actually already has a job, has already been working um, for this company and actually has an apartment that she's moving into this coming week. So just thankful that God blesses us and provides for our family. Thankful for many, many blessings in her own family and her daughter who God has put a lot of blessings in and has her uh, graduating from college and gaining a lot of, you know, the workplace, everything's going in great ways because of God's blessings. I'm thankful for my family and friends, but I'm most thankful for the cross of Jesus Christ and his blood that saved me from my sins and his resurrection that proved that his sacrifice was sufficient. Amen. Thankful for family and friends and loved ones, but most of all for Christ giving his life on the cross and the resurrection power that we live and have and enjoy. That's it. <laughs> I'm thankful that in this these uncertain times that we've been living in and all of the turmoil and stress and division that we have a God who has already won the victory Amen. and we can depend on him. Amen. Sure. Well, I've got some of the things to be thankful for too. I'm thankful for the prayers of the faithful that went through radiation and chemo and a hip replacement this last year. And uh, the prayers and cards, priceless. Thank you. Thankful for the prayers and for getting through hard times and healing. And, and thankful for hair. Thankful <laughs> for hair. <laughs> Others? I'm thankful that I learned a lesson not to question why Lord. Because when I get hit with a uh, some sort of a trial, I it's put me in the mindset now that I can say there's somebody out there that's got it going worse than I do. So for whatever God uh, has for me, I claim it, I own it, and I know that He'll see me through it because there's always somebody that's dealing with something worse. Thankful for God's lessons in life and for God's overcoming, even in hard times and challenging times and when we don't know why. Others? I am thankful for the reminder that even when things seem so bad, that you have people around you that will lift you up and let you know that, you know, um, think about others, what they need, what they want, and, and put yourself into their place. And how weird this may sound, I'm thankful that I know now, like my mom, who has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it puts, it puts me in a place that I can, I don't know how you say it, not adjust my attitude because I'm, I'm one that, that's going to give the best to people, but it really says, you know what, all she needs right now is grace, and to let things go, and just to love in the moment, because we have 
have no idea when that moment will end. And um, it's just a beautiful thing. And the friends that remind you of those little things. And, and can I say that um, my husband went back to work and I can do a happy dance eight months later? <laughs> so it's a lot to be thankful for. But those, those reminders of just of people that are in your life for a reason, you know, and they're for each other and relationships. That's what God has given us, people. Amen. Phyllis? I just wanted to say I'm thankful that I live in this country that we live in because we have freedom of religion. We can come to worship. We have so many blessings and so much to be thankful for that it just amazes me. I mean, this morning over the angel tree, I said a prayer for God to give me a, a, a person. I picked one out of the many. Things would be a perfect fit for me. She's a chubby girl like me, so that's <laughs> Thank, just, thankful for God, every blessing. God gives us so many blessings if we just stop and look at them, and that's what I'm thankful for. But to stop and look at them and realize them, them yes. to take take time to remember. Really, that's really a lot of what Thanksgiving is about, is we take time to say we're going to be thankful and look for those things. Because it is so easy just to go on and not, you know. Uh, but, but we, if we're Christ followers, God followers, we know Every good thing comes from God. Others with praise or thanksgiving. I just want to say I'm thankful that God is in control of everything. God is in control of everything. And all Very of our thankful. lives. All of our lives. I'm thankful that God is allowing me to sing and sing His praises and thanks to Dave. Well, I'm, I'm thankful for my family and uh, how blessed I am with my wonderful wife, Wendy, and uh, our son, Caleb, and his wife, Amanda. And, and, yeah, and there's just blessing on blessing. And uh, you can't hardly count them all, can you? <laughs> so, uh, and then I think it does, it changes your heart, doesn't it? And you're thankful in those ways and you count your blessings and you realize how blessed you are. And your attitude changes. And so, uh, and I think then you're able to lift some other people up who are having some great challenges or whatever it might be. And so I think uh, we, we want to be focused on the positives because we know we have a God who wins. Amen. And we're on the winning side. And it's an eternal winning thing. So, so we, we want to uh, be sharers of that because there are so many people that need some adjustment like the guy I talked about at the beginning of the story that he thought it was all about him and and we know as Christ followers it's not all about us uh, God blesses us that we would be a blessing to others so thank you all for sharing continue to share those as you gather with family and loved ones because I do think it is a way to share God's blessing that maybe other people need to realize you know if we don't speak up who will right so I just want to encourage you to do that. Uh, Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And, uh, you know, just as I was hearing the stories, you know, as you shared, there's just countless blessings. And they're blessing upon blessings that God provides to us. And, and we want to be thankful for all those things. And, and most of all, we do want to thank God that he sent Jesus to die for us. That he gave his very best from the beginning. And he continually showers on us great blessing. And so we do praise God, our Father, and we give him thanksgiving with grateful hearts. And, and it's a season of Thanksgiving. It isn't just a, a day, you know, on a Thursday when there's football on and a great spread of food. God did give his very best, and we want to remember that. And, and uh, as 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. Now, I, I had to go look at I said, well, that's three verses? Man, those are three short, powerful verses. 
So rejoice always, friends. Pray without ceasing. You know, we hear prayer concerns all the time. If we just take a moment and pause, we can think of someone that needs help, right? We should, we should lift them up. In everything, give thanks. God has this handled. And this is, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. And like I said, it really can be an attitude adjustment. Because if we watch the negative, the news, the whatever, it's definitely a pulls you down. <laughs> and there's some reality in all that because that's the dark world we live in. But the light always overcomes the darkness. Psalm 50, verses 14 and 15 say, Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. That's what they were doing in Psalm 107. Remember, they had trouble. They cried out. So they had to get real. <laughs> when hard things came, they finally said, oh, God, I need your help. He got their attention with hard things. I think there's a lot of people in our world today that are going through some hard things. I think a lot of people are crying out. We need to encourage them. God answers. God hears. God listens. It says he delivered them. He delivers us. And so we honor him. At verse 15, God makes a promise. He says that we should call on him in the day of trouble and he will answer. We know there's days of trouble, right? It's a fact. But we know we have a God who helps us. And like I said, Psalm 107, they cried out four different times. 